Hey, folks. Oh. Hello, uh, good morning and afternoon. Hey, Shui. Hey. Hi, Dodi. Let's wait for more people. Hi, everyone. Hi, Shui. Hi, Femen. Hi, Femen. Hi, Pablo. Hi, Fox. How are you? Hi, Pablo. Hello. Hi, Pritesh. Hi. Uh, thanks, Sajay, for pointing out. It seems like uh, I, write, I wrote a wrong date. Let me correct it. It should be 25th. I wrote 18th. Uh, oh, you can, then you can delete that section on the top. I paste it because there was no section for the 25th. Yeah. Let me do that. Hi, Pritesh. Uh, will Samuel join? Uh, Samuel won't join today. Like right now, he's traveling, so he won't be able to join. Okay. Uh, let's get started. Firstly, uh, let me uh, turn on the live on YouTube. Just a second. Does it work? Not. It said, please grant necessary privilege for live streaming. Um,
is there any access problem for enabling the live streaming? E? Uh, it seems so. Let me try it again. Uh, So we we have the recording going on, so we can upload the video after that. I guess. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, let's, just one yeah, second. Let's move. Let, yeah. let me. Yeah, let me publish again. Sorry, I couldn't make it. Uh, it's a new error. Yeah, I saw first time. So let's start it anyway. So we have the recording from the Zoom itself, so we can upload it manually. Uh. Let me share my screen. Yes, my screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. So today we have uh, two topics. Uh, the first one is to uh, discuss uh, some comments from two PRs. Uh, the second one is to review uh, the specification that uh, Pradesh prepared for the feature sign arbitrary data. Okay, then we get started. Uh, for the first uh, two PRs, uh, I saw uh, Patrick uh, responded to the comments. So any further uh, comments from your side, Pradesh? Like I am still like I want to say like should we just change should we change the model here, like should we read just policy first and pick that head instead of like making a network call to verify signature because we cannot verify signature if trust policy is invalid or trust store is invalid. Um. So I mean the current uh, uh order is to uh. You mean you expected to read the policy first, right? Uh, so is this a implementation uh logic or uh please so go app ahead. Apparently in spec also I think I wrote that part, I'm not sure, but it is written there that we will read trust policy after verifying the signature integrity at least. But now I am debating whether sh if we should do it other way around. Like first, right now, how we are doing is we pull a signature when we, when a user condition verify, we pull the first signature, we verify integrity of the signature, then we retrust store, and then we verify authenticity of the signature, and then we we cache the, the and then if the verification fails for second signature, we put first signature, then we pull the second signature. We try to read the trust store again if the basically we read it from the cache and then we verify that signature. So what's happening is when trust store is or trust policy is invalid, even though it's invalid, we know that we cannot verify the signature. You for like signatures, we are still trying to pull signatures. Which looks okay. like which doesn't look correct to me at least. Like if we know that we cannot verify a signature, then we shouldn't even pull the signature. Mm. So uh, my understanding is that this is not uh, related to the error messages that uh, these two PRs are going to fix. It, it's related to uh, improve the current verification logic, right? To, yeah, to I check mean, the it... store policy first then. It is both. If we fix the verification law, the way we are doing verification, it will by default improve the error message. For example, if you scroll a little bit up, 
for example when trust or when there is no certificate in trust or right even with the current fix it will show three errors which it says that okay first of all i tried to verify signature one then i tried to verify signature one and now it's showing me the third error that okay your tr your trust store is bad I, as a user i will think why are you even trying to verify a signature when you know my trust store is bad Does it make sense? Um, but, uh, yeah, for, for, for some part, it makes sense. But I'm thinking that for the trust store, the different, uh, I mean, registry scope can have a different store, right? So there is no centralized store for all the... Yes, uh, but when you pass an image, you know which trust store to read, right? And if that trust store is faulty, why are we even trying to pull that image? Like as a, as, a, as a human, as a user, I will question that, right? You know my trust store is faulty. There is no way you can successfully verify a signature. Then why are you even trying to pull the image? So mm -hmm. if I'm mm -hmm. understanding correctly, can we just fail fast is what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, I'm always for fail fast. Let's what I don't not following here why is why is it a concern apparently in spec we have written that we don't want to do it and it yeah so this is if you scroll down patrick referred to an spec somewhere at bottom where it's written that the verification should be done this way and which might be just a mistake on our side uh, yeah here you go this is linked there So it's it's not an actual spec, it's in FAQ, it's the fourth FAQ or the last one. Where it says so this FAQ was more about actually. Yeah, it was more about verifying the authenticity of a signature before making the revocation check. But there is a line which says However, this will lead to poor performance in the case where signature is not valid as there are a lot of validations against the signing IIT, including network revocation call, network call for revocation. And possibly we won't even need to read the trust store if the signature validation fails. So it's, mm -hmm. it's mostly about the line which says we won't even need to read the trust store trust policy. So what I'm suggesting is let's move away from this and let's read trust and trust policy as the first thing before we do any network call, we will, before even we pull the signature. I think that's fair. I mean, it's just validation. You could do them in parallel also if you want to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can optimize that, but how does that uh, relate to the PR? Okay, so if we scroll, go back to the PR, yeah, so because we are the PI is the uh, error message, right? Yes, we are trying to optimize the error message, right? So even if you see, now it's more confusing. What, for example, if you are showing fail to verify multiple signatures, even though Trusto is not valid, it's confusing to me. Because we'll be showing like, if, if I have like 15 signature, there will be like 15 error messages for saying I could verification fail for 15 signatures. And then at the end, it will show me that the things that fail because of trust policies invalid. So like uh, I'm just saying, let's make the I better think that's user experience. Not, I think that's not a hundred percent correct because if your signature integrity, one of your signatures integrity is not valid, then the error message would be the signature is the signature is tempered. Yeah, basically. for example. It's for not, example, if, it's not. if let's for example, if I have all the signatures valid in the registry and my trust store is misconfigured, I will still see all the messages. And and the last message will say that okay, your trust store is misconfigured. I tried to pull all the signatures first, and then I'm saying your trust store is misconfigured. I mean, I, 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 what I'm saying is yes, this CR improves the current customer experience. But why I'm suggesting let's make it better and not even pull the thing so that user is not confused. We will show that as a first error to the customer. So you won't even need to do all this optimization. Okay, so that means we we want to 
first uh, trust policy in notation CLI. And in the trust policy document, we find the correct trust policy statement. And then in that statement, we go through all the trust store path in that yes. statement and see if, yeah. if it's empty. Because the trust store uh, in the trust policy statement is an array. So we need to yes. go through every one of them. And if all of them are empty, we fail fast. Yes. Saying that the store is bad. And that's going to be a change in our spec because in the validations, uh, in the in the uh, in the verification workflow steps spec, uh, uh, it says can... we 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 verify the signature integrity first. Can you please share the spec link again? Because uh, we have the uh, the order of verification right. Uh, let me find the link. It's the flow, right? Uh, yes. Should be signing and verification workflow. Okay. And under verification steps. Let me um, you see my screen? Uh, I'm, I'm already. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, in this page. Yeah. Yeah. So in this workflow, we are verifying uh, identity uh, after the signature integrity. So if we want to do that, we need to change this spec. And this spec is, so uh, 1.0.0 is already released. So that's gonna be a breaking change. Uh, yes, can, yes, can you point me the line number, like it's just a bullet point which says that read that uh, we will read the rest of later. So I think as far as I remember, this spec was written irrespective of the implementation. And in implementation, we can decide to either lazy load things or validate them upfront. Uh, yes, it doesn't talk yeah, about yeah. when do we need to read trust policy. No, it, it does. It's under uh, term three. Okay. So filter signature artifact manifest under under that term B. Right, depending upon the trust store and trust policy configuration, further filter out signature manifest using the scopes and so on. Oh. Right. So that's already Yes, I think we really should make that change. I mean, I mean, technically we can validate this and it won't break the spec, but yeah, I do see it. With applicable trust policy. Okay, okay, let me just go back. Okay, so if you go to line number, there's some prerequisites. So if we scroll up, so we have called out that, oh, sorry, there's verify, in verify, there's a prerequisite. User has configured, oh, wait, I'm seeing different thing and you're seeing different. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, okay, my bad, yeah. User has called, uh, user has trust required for signature verification. I think there's a word missing called valid. But okay, we are assuming that, I think, I think the, 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 mis the misunderstanding here is we are assuming that trust and trust policies are valid. Yes, and we should clarify. For example, here is one more link where we call about verification. It's like actually how we perform verification. And here we have said that user has configured a valid trust and trust policy. 
So in the spec, we are getting the signatures before validating the trust store, right? Uh, yes, uh, I yeah, I'm there's a I agree that there's a confusion in the spec. So if you see the link which I shared, there we say that it's prerequisite that user has configured a valid trust store and trust policy. But yes, I do see your concern. Yeah. I mean, I think so my I'm suggestion fine. is uh, uh, my suggestion is uh, since this this part needs further discussion, um, um, uh, that PR is only updating the current error message logic, right? Um, I think anyway, we need another PR if we want to update this workflow in the future. So can we move on to? Uh, approve that PR first, and then we do further discussion on this. And if we uh, reach an agreement on updating the workflow, then uh, we can create an, a new PR regarding that. What do you think, Pritesh? So, so, I mean, if you look at the second link that Pritesh sent, right? The first step is that there is a valid trust policy that is applicable for verification is what it's saying, right? Isn't that not only a prerequisite, but it's also that you should identify what is the trust policy associated with what you're going to pull or validate? Um, in, in my opinion, this is for the trust policy store. This is spec first. So this spec uh, wants the user to configure a valid store and policy, but based on the flow, it seems the flow is that the trust policy trust store is uh, uh, after uh, get, getting this signature. That's true. And apparently we missed a word there. So even if you read, there's a prerequisite of for trust store and trust policy, there is no valid word there. Okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, is there any other problem if we move on uh, based on the current flow? Uh, yeah. if, if no, yeah, I, I think maybe Patrick has a good suggestion that uh, maybe Ritesh, you can create a, an issue for this, then we can discuss and align it uh, later. The only thing is we probably might not need this change. I agree, I'm not saying like, probably we might not need this change. And like, I have one more concern here is like, if I have 50 signatures and 51 matches, is it, is it a good user liquid? Like yeah, okay, so this is only for false scenario, right? Do we want to show all the signatures we have verified to customer by default? Um, like, because each signature can have different error messages. Um, even if the trust store is empty, Yes. Um, it can be different error message. Yes, but do we want because, to do we want this to be by default visible to customer? Because if there are 50 signatures, I will get 50 lines. Like I'm still like, yeah, that, that was one of the concerns with the trust oh, one, which we can simplify. Like that, that so there were two concerns which I had. First one was we can simplify this experience by adding trust trust store, which fixes one part of the problem. The second part is let's say even my everything is right. My, the signatures which I have doesn't matter. It's not trusted by user. We will still show. I end up showing them fifty error messages. Okay, we we verified signature one. We verified signature two. We verified signature three. Till fifty. And I'm still delivering. Is that the right customer experience or user experience to emit fifty lines of error messages by default, not in verbose mode? So my, uh, in my point of view, um, one of the pain points of our customers is that they have to use the, the verbals or debug flag to see the detailed uh, failure reasons of each signature. So this PR also removed the, the need of adding uh, verbals and debug flag um, to show the detailed failure reasons of each signature. 
but yes, if, if there are many signatures, then all the failure reasons are listed. Yeah, I, like I, I guess it's a trade off. Yeah. And I think that that's the reason we have verbos. So if you want more information, you can get that. But by default, limiting 50 lines doesn't look right to me as a study, like as a answer. Um, so, Pradesh, you think that if all the signature, I mean, failed, because currently uh, at least one signature verification uh, succeeds, we, we, we succeed this verification, right? So, if all the signature failed, we can show uh, a general error from the climate line, and uh, we can ask a user to use verbs to see the details of the failure yeah. for each signature. Is yeah, that your? Yeah, that's my opinion, but I want to hear from others such as the study here. No, okay. Yeah, basically I want to hear from product side more. <laughs> I think you don't even have some here. Uh, hey, what we can do is let's ping on the channel and tag the audience some me there to get their opinion. Even Sajay's opinion would be helpful here. Okay. Yeah. So let's continue the discussion offline. Uh, and we, yeah, I want to give some time for the second, second topic. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. For, so for, just to conclude, for first one, what we are going to do, are we going to change this back and pre-validate the trust policy? Like, do we need to change the spec really, or we are going to just pre-validate the trust policy before consuming them, so before consuming the trust policy? Uh, I think the... for, mm -hmm. for that, maybe, Pradesh, could you create an issue for tracking it? I think this this is not uh, uh, related to the PI itself, although I understand it, uh, if that, uh, uh, if we change the specification, maybe uh, there's no, need to update the uh, messages, but, uh, but it's uh, still a different uh, thing and it could uh, take some time. Makes sense, I will open an issue here, yeah. Yeah, so for, for that one, I think uh, maybe Pradesh can uh, help to create an issue. Optimized. Workflow, uh, and the second will be, uh, we can continue the discussion on the, on the error message, right? For if we have a uh, multiple signature failures. Okay, for this, I will uh, send uh, the message in the in the Slack chat so that we can continue discuss it. <clears throat> okay, then we jump to the second topic. Is that okay? Yep. Um, I think I already opened this one, okay. Uh, for this one, uh, I think Patrick Shui provided some comments and, and I also have similar comments. So not sure, Pradesh, you checked all the comments. How how should we review it? Or you yeah, want to give a general it. intro then yeah. we can jump into the comments? I think I can provide just this basic intro to, to both the sections. So basically, uh, instead of just creating a spec PRs, I am just uh, considering all the changes we will need to 
we will need in this pack to support signing of uh, signing and signature generation and verification of arbitrary data so that it's more readable and when we can understand it better. So at high level, we need to make change, we need to make spec changes in two places. First one is how we want to store the payload and what should be the payload. And the second place is in trust store and trust policy. Basically trust policy, it's around uh, how do we want to support scoping feature, like scopes. Right now we have something called registry scopes, but in case of uh, data signing, there is no registry interaction, so we need to figure out a way to do it. So that's another two high level change. And this third, which I am still, uh, which is work in progress, is basically uh, around adding a new feature which will allow user to chain commands. Basically, we'll support notation to read arbitrary data from STDIN and emit it to image signature to STD out, which is the third section of this document. Yep, and let me share the link if anyone is interested to read it. Uh... Yeah, I can share it. Yeah, I did already. Cool. So here is the one. I think I would, let's take 10 minutes to at least, so that everyone can at least scroll over it and if they have any questions and then we can start discussion in, after 10 minutes.
Uh, Pradesh, uh, yeah, did the uh, did the Samuel reveal this spec? Uh, not Samir, but I did join by Magenta. Okay, so maybe Samuel can also take a look since uh, maybe some, uh, for example, uh, CLI command flag name, maybe oh, yeah. Samuel can provide some, uh, yeah, comments, Is experience. It, yeah, yeah, just the activity is like for the service to some random names here. We can always change the name when I raise a PR. This is basically to run the concept and I will raise the PR after that. Okay, thanks.
a quick time check this and even need more time no i'm i'm done i think uh yeah i i read this document yesterday and uh, has some ideas already Nobody. Other, yeah. If nobody is speaking, I'll just assume everyone is done reading. So, speaker, if you need more time, else we can go over the comments. I think we can we we can jump to the comments. We we have uh, roughly eighteen minutes. Yeah, let's do that. Let's start with the first one from Patrick. Uh, let let me open like this. I scroll up and this one. Um, but it seems it doesn't point to the first comments. Yeah, I had the same problem when I was reading it. Like, yeah. Half half. <laughs> so, uh, so this one is uh, uh, a question on the trust policy. So, if the scope value is non OCI, um, how would notation know it's non OCI? Because it's a it's an invalid uh for reference of uh, of a registry. Uh, oh. if, uh... Wait, my bad. There are, we have a hyphen hyphen blob as the flag, right? Which makes sure, which, which. That's my second question. Should it be required? Um, yes. should be the the blob flag be required in the verify command? It's I I'm I'm not seeing it in the current example. Oh. Oh, my bad. I will fix that. Yes, it should be verified when you are verifying any arbitrary blob. If it's when you're not verifying a container image or container any uh, OCI artifact. So yes, it should be required. That's how we will interpret oh, it. If it's it. not, okay. if it's not there, then it's a mess on my side. I will fix that in example. I see. Yeah. So, uh, so if the blob flag appears, then is the policy scope flag required? Are they are they required uh, together? Uh, so policy scope is optional. Basically, there's, there's a wildcard policy similar to like what we have right now. There would be a wildcard policy. So if you don't specify, we will pick that. If you specify, then we will uh, pick the policy with the particular which is which user specified. I see. And if the blob flag is not there. Then it's, it's the current container. logic. It's, yes. it's OCI. Okay. Yep. Okay. And I will fix it. Good call out. I will fix that one. Yeah, the, the, the way I wrote this doc is I tried to solve the trust problem first and then I moved to actual signature. So that's the reason might be examples out of sync there. So this is the second comments, right? So let's use this view to start from top, although it is not actually the first in the comments. So what we just discussed is the second, right? Mr. The Block Flag, right? Uh, I think we discussed about, both. Yeah, the both, this one. So if, if there is a Block Flag, so there's no check for this uh, scope value, right? Scope would be checked, the registry scope won't be allowed. Doesn't make sense. Like if there's a hyphen hyphen blob flag, then trust then you cannot uh, basically your applicable trust policy cannot have a registry scope only scope value should be there. That's a good point, yeah. So Patrick did uh Pitesh answer the questions for the yes yes for, for the first one okay 
then uh, the first one, the second one, then the third. Yes, I I have fixed this, Patrick. I have added a flag where will user will write it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but as uh, production mentioned, that is not the final name, right? So this yeah, just the to give some idea, right? Yeah, yeah I okay. mean, the, it would be a flag, but the value of the name of the flag is not a determined yet. Okay. Uh, then we continue. During verifying a blob, does, how does notation find the location of the signature? Uh, yes, I think it's uh, first the same comment where I missed. Uh, Signature output flag or signature flag. Signature flag. How will we read signature? Okay. Uh, then move on. This one is from Shui. Uh, uh, sign yes, a huge file. Yeah, so Shui, I was thinking about this the way you would always basically run notation on that server and the remote server will run plugin. Basically, a remote server will run. Basically, the plugin will contact your remote server, which is hosting the signing service, or similar to what we have right now. So, yeah, that's what I was. That's the one way to solve it. We don't need to actually calculate the hash. The notation can calculate the hash and pass it to the remote service. Uh, so you mean, let a, but uh, wait a second. Uh, I think notation will pass the payload to the plugin, right? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, I think the uh, the uh, the notation CI will pass the payload to the um to the plugin. So actually, the the notation CI will read the content of the blob, right? Yes, and then it will pass to plugin, and plugin will get descriptor, not actual payload. I mean, not the user input. Yes, it will form a payload and then pass it to plugin. So, yeah, but, yes. if, uh, but if the payload is super large, then it's a problem, right? So, yeah, but you have to run notation on the build server. The workaround is you will have to run notation on build server. And like right now, how we do it, you will have to run the notations. So I was like, yes, you will have to take the risk of running notation on your build server. Okay, so basically you're running the uh, uh, notation on the uh, on the yes. server which contains the yeah. large file. Right? Yep, yep. And then you can have running integration which can call your signing service if you're worried about your keys or the way you want to do it or your KMS, yeah. The, the, I know the current model we have for container will also work. Okay, okay. So, uh, so remote signing a large blob is not a concern uh, and it's not a scenario. No, Anymore, yeah, right? I agree there. Yep, yep, I agree there. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, go to the next comment. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think yeah, that's a good point. That even experimental flag uses whatever the field, whatever the flag we decide. We should probably update the experimental flag if we want to use the same flag. We can reuse that. For example, if we if if we decide that the policy selector to be called scope, possibly we can update the experimental OCI layout signing feature with that same flag. So that's a good call out. Yeah. Uh, next one, uh, should it contain a scope of star? Uh, you said that uh, in the trust policy, the register scope of the rename scopes can be omitted, right? Sorry, can you please? Yes, yes. So that was a way yeah, to that. So I was yeah, still debating. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that concept I was still debating but it's like I was not thinking of that as an additional feature to the current one. So I was like, if we if we have to get rid of this scope, like not even passing scope flag, how can we do it? In that case, we'll have to allow customers to override this policy. And possibly we can make the scope field as we can optional because Basically, we can just eliminate the scope field because now user can have a different file for a different trust policy and they can just override it. 
Yeah, but I think uh, we still need to make the uh, scope uh, required instead of optional, because uh, as long as you have uh, a different spec for different kind of trust policies, we need to change the trust policy version. Uh, as long as we have version 1.0, that's on the top of the trust, uh, trust policy, we have to align the same requirement. That's correct. My, yes, I think, yes, you are right. I will fix that. I will decide the scope there, or I will bump up the version. You are right there. Yeah. Yeah. So if we want to omit the scope, then we need to bump up the version. Yeah, I agree that. And uh, on uh, like on thinking more, we should probably add the scope field there, even if the, we have that feature. Yes, I agree that. I think notation mm -hmm. doesn't support multiple users to specify multiple trust policies. That's correct. That was, yes, it didn't, and that was an enhancement, which I was thinking if we don't want to uh, add a flag, then the, the other way to do it is allow the user to override trust policies. So like if you scroll down the a bit, can you scroll a bit more down here? The same way, like we will allow user to override the trust policy location and then notation will pick up that location. That's one more way. And this can be an incremental feature, but I was just thinking from local signing perspective that how we can do it. But yeah, this is no longer a recommended solution. It was just an alternative, which I thought, so I thought I will document that. It might be as a feature request. I will also log it for future, yeah. Yeah, I think overriding the trust policy is kind of a future enhancement, but not mandatory yeah. for this spec, for this yes, feature. Yes, and, it, and it's a risky one because right now, I mean, then anyone can override the policy and verify might not know it so it's debatable that's why i was i just added it here as an option not a recommended one cool. uh, can we go to the next comment i think there are a couple of comments which i still go there uh yes on the seaways comment yes it, yeah i'm still debating about this again this is not a recommended approach so probably we won't implement this one I do, yes, I, that's the same test security implication that we can, if, if user can override it, then it becomes a problem. Especially, there's like, especially the feature, if, if notation is running as an authority source by the system admin, they might not want each user to value, override these values. So I do see, I acknowledge that concern. Yeah. But they are all in alternatives. Can you scroll down a bit more? I think there's a comment from, okay. This is one from Freeman. Oh no, so this is an alternative where we are saying that we will allow user to overwrite trust policy in notation. And that's, that, that's, that's the reason we had a new flag that to overwrite the location of trust policy. So the notation will read the trust policy from the following part. Does that answer your question, Freeman? Uh, sorry, should users input a location a location file path? Yes, that or... that was one that was one of the options I was exploring, but yeah, it's not a recommended approach. So the other way to do the so other way to support arbitrary data and trust policy was to override the trust policy, but it's no longer a recommended option. But it's a good feature enhancement, which we can discuss later. I will open a couple of issues after that, yeah. OK, uh, so this flag is also used to override the scope for non-OCI artifacts. So uh, OK, so there are two flags here which were introduced. One is hyphen hyphen uh, policy scope, and the second one is hyphen hyphen. Oh, mm -hmm. wait, can you uh, wait, second one is hyphen hyphen trust policy. If I'm not wrong, hyphen hyphen policy. One? Yes. Yeah. So hyphen hyphen policy allows you to override the complete trust policy. 
and hyphen hyphen policy scope allows you to select a policy a policy inside ah. plus policy dot json file. There are different flags. Okay, so I think for policy scope, users are suggested to uh, provide a file path for multiple trust yes. policies. Yes, if you want to override that. Okay, I, I understand that case. Uh, uh yes, uh cool. I yes, I agree with that that if notation should be prefixed that yep, I agree with that. Acknowledge it. Installed on the last one chaining. Yes, so like I wanted to talk about the chaining one. So uh right now we don't support chaining of commands in notation because we don't need it for OCI artifact because everything is passed as command and there's actually nothing passed as an input here. So what I'm suggesting here is as a part of supporting our signing, signing and verification of RBD data, I will also add a functionality where user can pass what the document which needs to be signed is STDIN and we will also allow users to emit the signatures as std out. This will allow users to chain multiple commands or this will allow users to even write a script around notation where they can just pass the input to notation and don't have to write it to a temporary location. I think it's easily achievable uh, without introduce, introducing more flags. So basically you can pass a dash uh, to the block flag and uh, uh, pass the dash flag for the signature output and it should achieve the same uh, result. Oh, so it's like, is it, it's sorry, I missed that. So is it like a standard in CLI or it's supported by, I am assuming, you are saying notation hyphen hyphen sign, then hyphen hyphen blob, then hyphen that that's it. Sorry, I'm just trying to understand that. So is it like is it inbuilt feature in the library which we are using? Uh, okay. It's not uh, so passing the dash uh, to as a file name is not a building feature. Uh, but it's common uh, in the CLI tools. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Well, if that's the case, then probably we can use this feature. We don't need to add a new flag. Okay. Yeah, multiple multiple CLI curl and other places except dash the standard in or standard. Oh, cool. That, that's that's awesome. Then we don't have to worry about that. Cool. Um, yeah, I think we have, I think there's one last comment by Freeman. Yeah, the one good thing about sure. that is, sorry. I mean, the one good thing about that is when you're chaining the command, you can accept it through standard and directly, right? Like as a dash. And so you can sign the content if the content is coming in through uh, STDN as well. That's true, yeah. Yes, and I do agree that this won't flow with registry. It's only for local signing. Like basically when you have a arbitrary data, when you have a data sign, you have a data locally with you. Hey, Pritesh, are you talking about um, my comment? I think or... I'm going to suggest comment. Uh, this is the last suggest comment. Sorry, sorry, I just skipped your comment. I'll go back because I was talking about it. So yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. So yeah, let's go over to your comment. Uh, okay. So for this, uh, so I, I'm thinking, I'm just looking at the Freeman's comment. How will how will the signed non OCR non OCR artifact and signature file be displayed to the registry? I mean, it would be similar to any other image or right now what we sign. Like user has to, like that's what my thinking is, user has to push that file 
in registry using either ORAS CLI and then sign that file in notation. Like, like any other container image which we are signing right now. So what I'm saying is notation won't support pushing an of arbitrary file in the registry. The user has to push that through, uh, through other mechanisms. Does that make sense? Uh, sorry, Pritesh. I, I'm asking this because I am thinking about the scenario of signing arbitrary data. I, I think we are kind of assume users are in a uh, local signing environment, local signing scenario. So I think we are assuming that users, uh, all the signing steps are happen in a file system. So I'm, I'm thinking, will users um, want to push the signed image and uh, the associated signature to a remote registry in the future? And how will that scenario oh. relate to the sign arbitrary data? So you are saying that user will sign locally and then push the data and signature as an OCI artifact to a remote registry, okay? Yeah, correct. I'm thinking about the possibility, possibility of the signature and the signed image. Do you, yep. do you assume that all of the signing steps are happen in the local only or there will be a dis distribution I was in the future? Think, I, I assume that everything is local only or they would be distributed by any content distribution networks or any other thing, but not through OCR registry. I mean, even if you distribute by OCR registry, they would be a different content associated with something. Okay, yeah, so, I will... I, so you are assuming that OC distribution to the OCI registry is not considered in the signing arbitrary data scenario. Yes, because I don't, let me think. Yeah, I will think that's a good point. Let me think about it. How can, if we can support it or not. So basically what you are saying is, there is a file locally, I will sign it. I have a signature locally. I will push that file to the registry and I will push that signature also to the registry. Now I want notation to verify that remote artifact, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So I'm, yeah, I'm thinking yeah. we should. Yeah, I think it's uh, related to this one, right? Yeah, similar to the distributing S bond by registry. Maybe users might sign the S bond file local in a local file system and uh, push the signed S bond with the signed image to a remote registry. Uh... Let me think about that. I haven't accounted for that scenario. So yep, I will take them that. I will like I will think more about it and probably update the specs with to some Yeah, yeah. This. So Pritesh, I I think in your spec, um I think it was to add a, a beginning for the scenario as we missed that part in your spec. Maybe we can uh, come up with some valid scenarios and identify which one are the most important scenario that we should uh, first to support in the spec. That's a good point. I will add a section that these are the following scenarios we are supporting. That's a good point. I will do that. Yeah, and uh, I'm currently working on another uh, scenario, another PRD for local signing, um, you know, the, another feature that we want to deliver in 1.1. So I'm thinking we can, um, leverage the uh, local signing capabilities for the signing arbitrary data. And yeah, let's I can share the, yeah. yeah, I can share this back when it is ready for review in the community. Cool. Uh, I will ping you offline for that. Like I, want, I would like to understand more so that we are not like duplicating the work. Okay. Cool. Uh, sorry yeah. folks, I need to run. I yeah. will follow up, like, feel we, free to, Ping me the comments or any feedback you have on Slack. I will reply to them after reaching home. Yeah. So Pritesh, so so I think the next step is you uh, update the spec, right? And also I think it's better that you can 
um, for example, as uh, Feynman also mentioned that you, you can mention the, the scenario that the specification and the implementation proposal we are targeting. And you, you also have some other things like uh, uh, the overriding, it could be uh, a second step for, for this feature. So it's better that you can, um, you can also clarify that maybe at a, a section that uh, which kind of uh, proposal scenario will be the first step for this feature and we can uh, identify some other things like overriding and uh, uh, also this chain chaining for the second or third step. Uh, so that's uh, we will be clear on what are the mandatory for, for this. For this yeah, feature, and uh, there are other enhancements that we identified. Maybe we can also consider in the in the yep. second iteration. Yep, sounds good to me. Okay, thanks. We are seven minutes over time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pradesh. For... Yep. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.